Hi there, it's Wade McMaster here. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can create a thumbnail for your YouTube videos using Photoshop. Now, there's not a lot of technical aspects to this. We're gonna be looking more, obviously you're gonna be showing you the technical aspects, but just giving you a couple of quick ideas and how you can actually pull them off to create a, a certain th uh, look or thumbnail for your video. And I guess a few, a few good practices. So uh, I've actually got a few images lined up um, here uh, on pexels.com which is a royalty free photo site. I highly recommend if you're just looking for free, royalty free images to use. Um, I've got a few photos uh, lined up here I'm gonna basically uh, use in, in these thumbnails. So uh, basically just gonna get right into it. So I'm gonna get a file into new. And I'm gonna create a file as 1920 by 1080. Now you only necessarily, you only really need to make your file 1280 by 720 if you need to, but I always prefer to go a little bit uh, up because I always prefer to size things down to make sure I'm not, uh, in case I sort of rust or something and increase the size of it um, just slightly, it's sort of covered by that shrinking process. But also just, uh, I like the idea of having higher resolution versions of the things I create on file. So if I ever want to, I can upload higher resolution versions. But we're talking about a tiny thumbnail, so it's not a big deal here which size you go with. But for now, we're going 1920 by 1080 pixels, and we're gonna click Create. So we've got our thumbnail here. And the first one I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna come up with a really basic, basic thumbnail for a video. Um, the topic I'm gonna to put on here isn't really important as much as just how the design works. So I'm basically gonna go, I'm going to, I've got this pixels image here, which is zoomed in at the moment. I'm gonna right click, I'm just gonna copy that image. I'm gonna paste it in, in place. So if you have an image with enough space, you can simply have something centered. But uh, one thing I like, you wanna use, you want a picture that's gonna catch people's attention. Emotion is always good in design uh, for do, for achieving that, because a lot of people, obviously, you know, uh, when they're looking for a solution to something, quite often there are emotions involved in that, that uh, has caused them a lot of trouble. So they're usually frustrated or something like that. So maybe I could choose this photo, or I'll just copy this other one off screen here. Even better, perhaps, this photo of this guy looking frustrated. Same guy. I'm gonna put him over here. Now, there's a few th different things you can do here um, for what I'm about to show you. So, basically, what I'm gonna show you is just creating a basic photo on one side to catch attention, and just a, a short headline um, to grab attention with text and also describe what the video is. Now, just note that uh, if you're just looking how, for how to technically do this, once you've designed this up, all you need to do is go to File, Export, Save for Web, and you can save a JPEG or something like that. It'll give you the option there. We'll go through that later. But that's basically the technical aspects. You're creating your design within a 1920 by 1080 um, size image and exporting it to a JPEG. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create. I'm going to create a box here. So I'm using my marquee tool at the top here. If you don't see that there, uh, I'll just hold this down. Look for the elliptical marquee, marquee which is like a circle or the, any one of these symbols. Press and hold down for that flyout to pop out, and we're just going to click the square marquee tool. Uh, what I'm also going to do is grab this one over here, which is the polygon lasso tool. So you look for the lasso tool, the magnetic lasso tool. And once again, click and hold down, grab the polygon tool. And I'm literally just going to hold down Alt so I can remove part of the selection just on a bit of an angle, uh, maybe a bit deeper. I, don't, I want to make sure I don't have any white, so I'm gonna go over here. And because I want this to stand out, you can see that his shirt is red, so maybe in this particular instance, for some reason I've got things popping up on my other monitor, uh, I'm gonna go with red which is gonna be a bit full on, but you know. One thing I uh, do recommend about designing too is as you're working, if you've got an idea in mind, that's perfect. If not, there's nothing wrong with just taking a look back and seeing what you think would make that thing work and just adjusting as you go. So I've got my layers palette over here. If you can't see that, go to Window and Layers to turn that on. I'm gonna create a new layer by hitting this little plus symbol down the bottom here. And I'm gonna use my Paint Bucket tool which once again can be found either as gradient tool or that. Once again, click and hold, pick the paint bucket tool, and we're gonna fill that in. So that's pretty bright. It's bright and red and it's not. It's just not, um, yeah, it's definitely nice and loud. 
what we're going to do is actually create some text to go there as well. So we're going to do something, say, uh, something about being frustrated with something. Maybe it's your budget. Um, so we can say avoid, avoid budget. Let's make that all one line. You can't really see that because it's tiny. So I'm going to, so what I've done there, I've just hit this text tool over here. Just gone for the horizontal type text tool. I've just clicked and I've typed. I'm actually going to enlarge this. So I've actually gone to edit, free transform or control T. I'm gonna make this bigger. And because I have the text tool selected here, I can change the colors and fonts up here. So I'm gonna change this color to white. I'm not a big fan of that font. Uh, so I can go through here and choose a font, a different font. So uh, maybe we'll go with Gotham. Now, another thing we've got here is that the spacing is just a bit too far out. So I'm gonna click on this box up here and it's gonna bring up the character dialog box. And you'll see here a V and an A with an arrow. That's the space between letters. I can take that, make it negative 10 or say, oh sorry, negative five or negative 10 and I get something like this. So what I'm actually gonna do here, I've got avoid budget. I'm gonna copy that. So I'm gonna basically click on this again. To double click to close it up. I'm gonna take this bit of text here. I'm gonna just click and drag it into the plus symbol to duplicate it. And then I'm basically holding a control or I think it's command on Mac over and moving that. I'm gonna type in frustration. Now you can simply bold that if you want to. And that could be your headline, but if you want a bit more of an effect, I'm going to choose a handwritten font. So you might want to scroll through and find what you want, but I'm going to go straight for an easy font on Google, Google fonts and go permanent marker. Once again, control T and I'm going to just enlarge that to about the size I want. So avoid budget frustration. This is very, and this is obviously very basic, but one thing I can do now that I have the layers pillar is I can hold down control, click both layers once again, Control or Command, and I'm gonna hit Control T or Command T, and I can actually change the size of the whole thing. Now you may notice that's quite difficult to read. Even if I make all of this black, it's still quite difficult to read. The reason for that is contrast. So I'm gonna make it white again, just for, well, for while we're moving ahead here. Contrast, so basically this is why black on white works best or white on black works best for lettering is because when you create contrast, it means that the symbol is more easily recognized by your eye. So you wanna, you wanna go with a really, like a lighter color as possible against a darker color as possible or vice versa. So what I'm actually gonna do on my layers palette on the right over here, we can sort of see my little red box. I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna come down to the plus symbol, create a new layer. I'm gonna grab my rectangular mar marquee tool here. I'm gonna draw a box around the text. And over here, I'm actually going to click these arrows and uh, choose the black, or you can actually just click on the red and pick the black like that. And then I'm just gonna fill this in. And so now that text is quite easily read. And uh, just to give another touch, maybe I'll go to the frustration part because I want that to stand out. Take my text tool and maybe I'll make that by going up here, clicking yellow. Avoid budget frustration. Now, another thing I can do is on this black box here, just to give a little bit of a nice touch, I'm gonna to drag that down to the plus symbol there. I'm gonna hit Control T again, and just by hovering around the outside, I'm gonna grab it and rotate it a little. And then I'm gonna invert the colors by hitting Control, or if you're on a Mac, Command, I think it is, Command I. Control I, create a white box. I'm just gonna drag that box underneath the black box over here. So we have this sort of avoid budget frustration box here. I'm just gonna click here. I'm gonna click shift on the top. So these four layers get selected. And now I can move that around to where I want. And once again, if I hit control T, I can even rotate that a little if I want to. I can enlarge it. And now we have a pretty basic uh, YouTube thumbnail. We're showing a little bit of emotion here on the on the left. And if we're happy, we can go ahead and save that. So I can basically go in here to File, Export, Save for Web. As I mentioned before, I'm gonna choose a JPEG, the size at 200, maybe I wanna make that smaller by dragging the quality down. So 160, 
I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to save that on my computer and then we're going to upload it to YouTube. Now, I'm not going to actually go through the uploading to YouTube uh, in this one. You basically you just want to go into YouTube into your Creo Studio uh, and then go to your video section. And when you open up to edit a video, you should be able to add a thumbnail in there pretty easily. But uh, the other thing too is if your channel isn't verified, you may not be able to do that. So you do need to get your channel verified. All right, so that is one type of thumbnail. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try and sort of get through this a bit, bit more quickly so we can sort of view a few different types. One of the reasons I've got this guy here and the fact that there were two distinctly different faces is because there's another type of thumbnail you can do which is also quite popular. What I'm gonna do, uh, because this is all in separate layers, I'm actually, I wanna be able to grab this and move around one hit. So I'm actually going to hit, hit Control G or Command G if you're on Mac to group that. And now I have this group here, I can even call it title. So all I did there was double click and type. And so now whenever I click that group, I can just hold down Control or Command, move that around. I can hit Control T, rotate it, do what I want. I can make it smaller, bigger, whatever. So I'm actually gonna turn off this layer here with the red. And what I wanna do, now you see I've got my rulers here. If you don't see your rulers, head to view, find rulers on here, turn that on. If I click over here in the ruler and drag, I get a guideline. Now when I go to here, I've got 1920. It's because my on my far right, 1920, that's the width of the actual image is 1920 pixels. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to try and get it dead in the center, which should be, what's it, 1960? There we go, you can see the little hover over says 1960. I'm gonna pop a guideline right there. And what I'm gonna do, you can see I've got my two layers over here on the right. I'm going to hit Control T on this first one and I'm going to resize it. Just so the height's there, he's looking nice and frustrated. And then over here underneath, I'm gonna take this one layer, I'm gonna move it across, put his nice excited face on the right, hit Control T and just resize it down a little bit more again. Now, how do I get this to crop here? It's nice and simple. Uh, what I'm gonna do though, is I'm actually going to, so I'm gonna hit the, yeah, get my marquee tool. I'm gonna to select, sorry, I'm gonna select this left side and I'm gonna click up onto this layer on the left. I'm just gonna hit uh, this masking section here, add layer mask. Now what I'm gonna also do is I'm gonna do the same on the other side. So I can either just select or I can, there's a bunch of different ways you can do it, but I'm just gonna select the guide because it will snap to the guide. And I'm also gonna do the same thing here and click down the bottom to this little, so it's like a little square with a circle I didn't mention on the last step. Add layer mask, I'm gonna click that. Now one thing I've noticed is this one, this image on the left here is a little bit off center. So where I have this little link symbol, I'm gonna click on that layer. Where I have this link symbol, I'm gonna unclick that. I'm actually gonna unclick it for both because I want these masks to stay where they are. I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna move it across. Because what this mask actually does is it it'll stops the image from displaying outside of anything that is white. If I take this black here and paint over it, whoops, <laughs> that'll actually paint on the picture, but if I select the mask on the right, it'll actually turn off parts of the image. So I've actually used the white there, so it's turned on part of the image, if that makes sense. So you can see here, I've got it colored in, starting to turn back on. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. But if I switch to the black, it'll actually take some of the image out. And that's how the mask works, is by whatever's white is displayed, whatever's black disappears. And if you choose gray, you get a semi-transparency based on the darkness or the lightness of the gray as to how transparent that is. So what I can do, let's say we've got our um, avoid budget frustration. Let's just remove that for now. So we've got our image here and maybe what we wanna do is get people to look, read more of the title. And because most people, if they're doing a search, they know what they're searching for. If the video pops up, they know it's somewhat uh, relevant to what they're looking for. So I'm actually going to get this text tool. I'm gonna to type in before. I'm gonna hit control T, make that bigger again. Before, once again, I'm gonna click over on the layer, drag it to this plus symbol to duplicate it, come across to after. 
And I'm going to hold down control to select both layers and I'm going to make the text white. Once again, text tool selected. So I go up here, click white. And I'm going to click just under that layer. So basically the first layer that's underneath the, the bottom text layer and underneath the before there, I'm going to click new layer, draw another box here. And I'm just going to fill that with black. Okay, so we've got a before and after. So that's something that can stand out pretty well. But one thing you can also do just to give it a little bit more uh, depth is to cut these people out and actually put like a colored background in there and that will stand out even more. Now I've got a tutorial on how you can actually trace and cut people out. But I'm just going to do a very rough one. So I'm going to click on the left layer here so you can see with the thumbnail it's sitting on the left and then click select subject. You see it's actually selected the, the guy himself. I'm actually going to then go select inverse and I'm just going to delete that. Now, probably one of the better ways to do that is actually to use the masking tool. But for the sake of this tutorial, while we're trying to move pretty quickly, now, there's a few issues with that subject select. You can see here it's got a little bit of gray there, a little bit of gray there. Not too concerned about this for the video since we're just demonstrating. We want to move ahead pretty quickly. But you can go through and remove that with an eraser or if you're using a mask, using the black on your mask. Uh, topic for another video, masking and cutting out. We do plan on doing more videos on that in the future so you can sort of do that a bit more effectively. So I'm gonna click on the layer underneath and I'm gonna do the same again. I'm gonna select subject. Now I wanna make sure I actually have the left layer selected and not the mask. So select subject. And basically, instead of going to select an inverse, I'm gonna just hit Control Shift I or Command Shift I and delete the layer, delete the background. So now I have two transparent backgrounds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a layer behind this right layer. I'm gonna Control and click on the mask. So what this actually does is it actually selects what I've made uh, appear with the mask. So if I click on this, it selects that there. So if I actually happen to throw some gray into this mask and fade it a bit more, it'll actually create a selection with semi-transparencies that I can click on and select at any time. It's the same if I select on the hold down control and click on the guy himself, I get a selection of him. But because we just want to pop a background color in here, I'm going to hit control and click on the actual layer mask. Because he's happy, we're going to go with the green on this side. Fill that in. And then we're gonna create another layer underneath the left layer. Once again, control click the mask. This time we're gonna grab nice bright red and fill that in. So you can create these nice before and after uh, images and they're quite popular on, on YouTube as well. So you can get some pretty nifty effects that way. Um, it's pretty cool. Uh, I think a lot of people understand that. The other thing too is it's not just emotion you want to convey. If you're talking about, you know, uh, doing something up, maybe you're talking about how to restore a car. You pop a really old, you pop a car there that's basically looking like it's about to rust and fall to bits as before. You get a brand new uh, looking version of that same car. Obviously, it's been done up, restored in the after. Things like that can be very useful as well because then it sort of shows, oh, the results. And people are curious about what's between the before and after, how they got from here to there. So that's another quick way on how you can actually create a thumbnail like that. Now, I'm going to create one more based on what we just spoke about because we're not looking at just the emotion at this stage. So I'm going to very quickly delete most of these layers. So I've just basically... To cover before, when I hold down control, I can select multiple layers. If I hold down shift, I can click on one and another and it selects all the layers in between. And I'm just going to basically drag these into the trash bin down here to delete them. Now I do have another image off to the side here I'm going to bring in. So I'm going to copy that image once again for pixels and I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to pop this in control T. I'm just going to position it in because I want to show the lights in this image. I want to really show what we've got here. And what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to shrink it a bit more actually, is really show that off. I'm going to put it on to, because we've got black on the right, I think it'll be a bit easier for us if we put it on the left. We don't have to worry about doing too many cutting out bits and pieces. 
Once again, if you've got any questions about how to do things in Photoshop, leave a comment below because uh, while I'm creating videos, I love the I, I love the fact that people are asking for particular things. So uh, it'd be good to actually know what you guys are looking for and I can create a video on it if I'm capable of doing it. <laughs> I've been using Photoshop for about 20 years now, so I think it should be right. So what I'm going to do now, we've got a photo of some lighting over here. I'm going to actually grab my little dropper tool. Once again, if you find one of these, hold it down, click the eyedropper tool, and go right to the edge of this image and actually click that. And I can use my fill bucket to just fill in the remainder. But it doesn't quite look right. So another thing you can do also is if I grab my marquee tool, highlight, say, and just overlap it a little bit, I can actually go into edit and content aware fill. And I'm just going to click OK. I'm going to go over here and click Auto. And it'll actually sort of automatically create that section for me. We've got a bit of a weird glitch here, but you know, let's just go with it for the video. And hit Control D to deselect. So I have a lighting set up on the left and nothing on the right. So I'm going to basically create a little how to. So I'm going to click a new layer, get my hit the letter T to get the text tool. I'm going to type in how how to. That's in black, so you can't see it. I'm going to click at the top here, make that white. Now I'm going to change the font. Something tall and thin, so I'm going to go with something like Oswald. I won't bore you with going through all the fonts. We'll go uh, nice and thin. I'll fix up my typo here. I'm going to go how to set up. Once again, I've dragged this into the new layer to duplicate it. Now, I actually want to go back and add A on the end here, so I'm just going to click on this with the text tool, space and A, control enter. And then I'm going to put photo studio on two lines. I'm going to go up top here, make that bold. And I'm actually going to increase the size of that by hitting control T for free transform. Come back over here, hit control T, and just sort of uh, put this here like that. I'm going to control click so I can move it into position. So you can see here now, we've got this image, this text here. It's a bit difficult to read. But if you've got a photo that's quite large and actually fills a large area, what you can even do is, for one, I'm going to grab, because I've used this fill, it's actually created a new layer. The content aware fill I did earlier created a new layer down here. But I'm going to control click on both layers. Sorry, I'm going to control and click both layers, not control click the one layer. I'm going to hit control T for free transform. And I'm going to try and shrink it just a little bit more. And just try and drag it across. So it's sort of there. We're not getting quite everything, but it's good enough. I'm going to take this layer that we created just, just to sort of get through this. I'm going to enlarge this. Now it does change proportionally, you'll notice. If I hold down shift, I can just widen it. There we go. So there's a little bit of, uh, like I said, it's not quite perfect down here, but for what we're doing, I think it's fine. So I've got our little how to set up a photo studio and control click, move these around, control T. And you can just create something nice and simple like this. You don't need boxes and things behind it, but if you've got an image that has a nice dark background or a light background, just popping some text over the top that can be easily read is also useful. We've got a picture of the photo studio itself. It looks quite impressive. So how to set up a photo studio. Uh, it's uh, just a nice, it sort of tells the story of exactly what we've got there. And people, if, especially if this is the studio in the video that uh, the hypothetical video we're making, it will actually get people thinking, oh, this is the studio they create in the video and I want to know how to create that. So an image in the left, text on the right, you can flip it, have text on the left, photo on the right. Not going to do that now because uh, just because of the amount of time it'll take. But that's another very quick and easy thing you can do to create a YouTube video thumbnail. You can add in a few little uh, extras as well. If I click on the marquee tool up here, I can add borders by just simply creating a nice thin rectangle, creating a new layer. I'm going to click on this to reset the color palette to black and white and then click this little arrow to switch it. Grab our paint bucket tool and fill it with white. So I can border that like this and then I can of course drag this down to the plus symbol and just duplicate that layer. Then by holding that control and shift, I can move it straight up and down and even have it down the bottom. 
So there's a few nice easy things you can do to create a decent looking thumbnail. So that's a nice classy looking thumbnail. Some of the other ones are a little bit more uh, sort of in your face, but it just shows you how easy it is with a, some photography. Um, it doesn't even have to be your photography. Like I said, head to pexels.com. Um, with a few bits and pieces, you can create a good thumbnail. Now I do have some resources for you for this. I do have, I'll put a link down the bottom, show you where you can get royalty free images from. Um, that's not just one website, but that is actually a blog post covering a number of websites. So you can try some out, see which one suits you best. And also uh, Google fonts for your fonts is an excellent place to go get uh, yeah, fonts that you can use for free. So I'll put a link to Google fonts in the description below as well. Otherwise, if you're happy with that, like I said, once you're ready, go to file, export and save for web. I also have a video on save for web going through a little bit more of the uh, detail there. But um, yeah, if you want something more in depth, once again, let me know. I'm happy to cover the videos and give you a bit more information. But uh, yeah, save that as a JPEG, hit save, and then you've got your image to upload. So that's the video, and I um, hope you found that useful. Any questions, please, please leave them in the comments. Otherwise, I hope to see you again soon, and have a great day. See you later.